Hashmap Megabytes. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Hashmap Megabytes. My name is David Hernser, and today I'm going to walk you through the who, what, when, where, how, and why of column level security. And then we're going to take a little walk through a use case, kind of driven through a SQL inside the Snowflake web UI. Let's get started. All right, first, the what. So what is column security? Really, this is more about what is column masking. It's a form of tokenization where users who are granted read access to sensitive info see the actual value, and vice versa, users who are not granted the read access see a masked version of the value. So Snowflake has two types of column mask or column tokenization. The first one, and the one we're going to talk about today, is dynamic data masking. In this format, data is stored and queried in its raw form, but has a masking policy applied upon access, which may tokenize the data or you know, obfuscate it, based on the permissions inside the masking policy. And just to note, this is only currently available right now on the Enterprise Edition. The other feature is external tokenization, which we're not going to discuss today. That'll be on a future megabyte. But with this methodology, data is tokenized before being stored as Snowflake via third party, such as Protegrity. Here, the masking policy is reversed, where those who are allowed to see the sensitive data will have the tokenization removed from the data upon query. So it's kind of, they're exactly opposite of one another. So dynamic, the data is stored in its raw clear text form. External, it's stored and already in a tokenized state. So they both use masking policies and tokenization policies, but really the, the kind of the key benefit of doing external is there's really no chance of anyone accidentally displaying the sensitive data right, where you could have that, uh, if you didn't have a really locked down way of doing your data integration and engineering of your data with a dynamic approach. But for this, again, I think the most commonly used is the dynamic, and that's the one we're going to discuss today. All right, the second part of this is the where. So where does this apply? So this applies to tables, views, materialized views. There's a couple caveats there. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Clone tables, again, some caveats there. External tables and streams as well. So let's go on to the next part here, the why. So what is it? I mean, why do we do this? Why do we need to mass data in Snowflake? Uh, of course, you could say there's probably certain sensitive data, right? You may want to limit uh, who can see this data. And the whole story is, right, if you limit who can see the data, then you really limit the possibility of fraud. Also, data is tokenized directly from the source. What this means is that if I'm, say, building a web application, for example, I don't have to have the software engineers building the web app uh, you know, obfuscate or tokenize or mask the data that's clearly retrieved, right? The database, so it's tokenized at the source. So I don't, I, when I actually make a query to the database, I get back a masked version. So again, this gives the application engineers a lot less to worry about. And also uh, think about it, as you're querying data from the source via say, a BI tool or some just ad hoc query, you're also having the data masked immediately versus having, you know, letting people see the, uh, the raw data in its raw format. Potentially, uh, you can lower the number of views. So now you have one view of data that may have sensitive info versus multiple, view, multiple views to hide that sensitive data. And this is kind of what our use case is going to cover. I don't want to do a spoiler here, but if I had, say, three forms of masking, I would have to have three forms of views, right? This is really saves us, saves programming time, saves everything else, where it's a lot easier to produce one view and have that data mask based on the role being used. Another one is we can build one masking policy, but have that policy apply to any number of columns in your database. Also, we have segregation of duties, so SOD. For those of you who know that is, uh, that is where you have a security organization, right? So they really apply the roles and uh, control the security aspect versus the data owners or the, or the DBAs. And lastly, uh, it really eases data authorization and governance. If you think about it, if you put a policy on something, even the account admin, right, or the security admin, technically don't have rights to see it. It's all governed by that policy. So we talked about kind of the what and uh, the whys and the kind of the where as well. So how about how and the who? So how the policy is implemented. So really, the first thing you have to do is get buy-in from all stakeholders, right? Everyone has to agree on this approach. You want to develop uh, an implementation process, a monitoring process, and control processes, right? And then more importantly, you want to kind of build a formalized workflow kind of to enforce these plans. So it's really, it's truly an organization or a team effort to get this to work. 
Snowflake kind of promotes three possibilities, and these, these are the three most common uh, possibilities. So you have a kind of a dedicated or centralized governance. And this is where the roles and responsibilities are given to a specific security group, right? So the security group creates the policies, they ensure that they're applied correctly in a formal fashion, and that governing group is the security group. They, they kind of control all the aspects. And on the flip side of that, there is distributed or decentralized governance. This is where all the policies are created and owned like by the data owners or by the uh, data object owners, right? A set of the DBAs, right? And then of course you can have a hybrid approach, right? This is where you still have the roles and responsibilities are kind of controlled and created by a security group, but then once everything's cleared to go, the database administrators or the data owners will actually apply these policies. So of course we can't leave out with all the W's, we can't leave out the when. So when do we apply this? So regardless of how these are applied, right, regardless of who applies them or how they're applied, you have to know when to apply these. And really, it's any time when you have an initial architecture design or implementation, right, any time the architecture is expanded, if the architecture or anything, or if you're implementing new data sources, modifications are made to it, maybe a current column or how that column is used. So truly, it's any business function, right, any business function that can possibly introduce sensitive data into the system. All this has to be tied back to that formal workflow plan, right? Where all the governance is controlled. That pretty much covers all of the W's. But before we get to our use case, I kind of want to go over a couple of various things. So some things to keep in mind uh, when, you're, when you start talking about policies and implementing uh, column level security. Number one is the order by clause, right? So data order, right? If you're applying uh, order by to a mass column, then pretty much the order is going to be ignored. If you use mass column, if you're using it inside of a where clause, so you have conditionals around it, most likely you're not going to get the results you're looking for. Same goes along that line with, with joining, right? If you're joining uh, mass columns uh, and you don't have the right permissions, you're not going to see the right data. Of course, you can mass columns also in shared data sets. Just a note here, only dynamic data masking is available for shared data sets. So materialized views, here's some of those caveats we talked about just a minute ago. You can pull columns from a table that has a mass column, provided you don't actually try to materialize that uh, mass column, right? You're going to get an error. Snowflake will actually throw you an error if you try to do that. So what you have to do is you'd have to have a raw table and build a materialized view and then actually apply the policy to that materialized view. So CTAs, so when you do a create table as, right, um, they don't clone policies. So if you really want to get that data, what you're going to have to do is use a role that can see all the data, do a create table as, and then go back and apply that masking policy to that newly created table. All right, here we go. Use case time. Yes. Now to the fun part. Enough of the, enough of, enough of the verbiage. Let's get to some fun stuff. So our uh, use case problem is going to be multi-masking sensitive data. For our purposes here, social security numbers. And for those who don't know what that is, those are maybe outside the U.S., those are government-issued ID numbers that are unique across every American citizen. That just Sometimes we'll have vari uh, variations of use of that uh, social security number where we want that kind of locked down because it becomes PII. And the players we have in this use case, we're going to have an analyst. Uh, it's like people in an analyst role. And th these are people who do more ad hoc reporting, right, or maybe uh, uh, problem solving, right, things like that. So they can't see any portion of the SSN, right, completely masked. Then we're going to have a customer support group, and they can only see the last four digits of the SSN. And then we're going to have uh, the benefits coordinators, right? And these are the ones maybe talking to the healthcare providers or insurance companies, right? So they're going to get to see the entire SSN. So let's go ahead and jump over to our Snowflake worksheet. Let me jump over there. All right, here we go. And now what you're going to see here in this worksheet is quite a bit of SQL statements. Really, only about, uh, let's see, about this many actually matter, right? That's about all we can actually run. Uh, but what I'm doing here, I'm creating an entire environment. And of course, when I'm done, you see at the very bottom of this environment, when I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and drop it all because I'm, I'm running all this in a kind of a development area, kind of a shared environment. So I don't want to have all my um, test junk sitting out here when I'm all done, kind of confuse people as to what I'm doing over here. So let's get started. The first we're gonna thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our working session on our, on our worksheet. So I'm going to Go ahead and kick off my role. I'm going to say, here's my role. I'm going to go ahead and set up the database I want to, uh, on my worksheet and also my schema. Um, I have no data out here with any kind of, of course, 
of course, PII inside of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sequence number that's going to kind of spawn me some fake SSNs. And I'm going to start it with like a default junk uh, nine-digit number since that's what SSNs are. So let's go ahead and create that sequence number. And then we're going to go ahead and go ahead and create the table that we're going to need to store all this data. And how, what we're going to do next is we're going to insert the data. What I, all I'm going to do is take some of this from the, uh, the TPCH uh, table that comes along for the ride inside Snowflake. So you could kind of do this exact same thing in your instance if you really wanted to. So I'm going to go ahead and insert just a thousand rows. And that's going to go ahead and generate those, those SSNs. And let's, it's already done. Let's go ahead and look at those. If I query the data, here we go. We can see I have a customer ID, a customer name, a uh, customer address, and of course, here's my custom SSNs that were made. And of course, you can see since there's no masking policy, I get to see all the raw data. Now, this next section here where you see all these roles being built, kind of believer, strong believer in RBAC. So I like, even, even when I'm doing demos, I like to kind of, kind of enforce that. So I'm going to create some organization roles. Remember, these are roles where only users are added. There's no database object uh, or privileges applied to these roles. Then I'm going to create one database object role where object privileges are provided. And I'm going to grant that to all these roles. So now I, I don't have to worry about moving roles or assigning privileges to everyone. I'll be able to just run this uh, all straight through utilizing all these different roles. Let's go ahead and set that up. And I'm going to run this entire block at once. Be a lot quicker. All right. Yes. And yes. Going to flicker a couple times. I'll have to run through. There we go. Everything's done. All right. Now I'm going to do the last part of this, which is where I'm going to actually let that uh, DB reader role actually have access to that data. I'm going to go ahead and turn on sysadmin role. Go ahead and give you usage on the database, usage on the schema. And I'm going to go ahead and grant select only on that table. At this point in time, all the roles should have access. And again, a lot of this is probably going to already be done, right, for your organization. I'm just doing this for our, for our test today, for our use case. All right, so I had a little bit of fun. So what I decided to do uh, when I built a policy, instead of masking and putting anything inside the policy, I created a couple of SQL UDF. So the first UDF here is token all, which means it's going to, I'd say token is really masking, but uh, it's going to tokenize or mask the entire SSN. And this is for people who can't see anything. And the second one is going to uh, just return the last four digits and the rest of it will be masked with an ash. Let's go ahead. I'm going to create the owner. And you can see I'm actually using uh, my test dehernster area role. So I, I'm, not, I'm not utilizing the part of, we talked about a while ago, we have dedicated security groups, right? What I probably have, I would probably have a dedicated security role. And I'd probably even have a security schema where all these policies can be located in one spot versus being all over the place. And let's go ahead and run this first one. There we go. Got the first function created. Got the second function created. All right, so now we're down to our masking policy. And this is really right here. This is all we have to do to get a column level security or column level, you know, dynamic data masking put into Snowflake. I'm going to say create a masking policy. I'm going to call it this. I'm say, and I have a couple of condition statements in here. So if I'm, again, if I'm the um, organization and benefit coordinator role, I'm going to say, show me the entire value. If I am in support, I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, mask everything except for the last four digits. And anything else, I'm going to go ahead and, and basically tokenize or mask the entire thing. Let's go ahead and create that. All right, masking policy is done. And just a quick tidbit, if you ever want to see the masking policies that are maybe on the database, as long as you have access to them, you can run this show command, and it'll see it. And then, but of course, one thing you can't see is the actual code. So right, once this is run, you can't see this anymore because it'll disappear. Uh, and it's not available in the object browser on the left or in the databases section. So if you want, you can always use Snowflake's uh, describe functionality. Do that here. And it gives you back the row, and you can actually see the entire statement. So I click on that. It'll kind of pop open, pop open and let you see all the code inside. That's a kind of quick way to, if you want to go back and see what someone coded, if you have access to it, and you can actually see what they did. All right, so let's run a test. Go ahead and run this. And, uh-oh, nothing's tokenized. And I did that on purpose. So I want you to understand that just because we added a policy doesn't mean anything. It's kind of like a stored procedure. Just because you created it doesn't mean, or a UDF, right? It doesn't mean it's going to be activated, right? You have to apply it first. So since I didn't apply it, and I'm logged in with a, uh, a test uh, role, I get to still, still see all the data. 
in its raw format. So let's go ahead and apply that. So it's a simple alter statement. I'm going to say alter this table, go to this column, and apply the policy that I just put. Here we go. Now let's test again. Now I should see a masked version of this. There we go. That's what I wanted to see. And everything now for this customer data is masked, right? Because I, again, I'm using test dehernser area role, which will, if you look at the policy, will go straight to this else clause. All right, so, so far so good. So let's do a couple tests. So if I'm inside the organizational support role, say I'm, say I'm like the help desk, right? And I'm working with a client and I want to confirm the last four digits of their SSN to make sure I know who I'm talking to, right? So if I run this now, there we go. Now the SSNs come back, but with only the last four digits. So again, I'm not relying on application developers or someone else to enforce a policy for me. This is directly coming out of the database. Very powerful. How about the analyst role? So if I change my role to analyst, say I'm doing some ad hoc reporting and I come in here and query this table, everything is masked, right? I'm just doing troubleshooting or some back-end work reporting. I don't get to see all this data. This will probably be, of course, again, this will go along with the default as well. And again, this also hits the else clause. Now, if I'm the benefit coordinator, let's go ahead and jump to that role. Then again, everything is unmasked, right? It's the data in its raw format. So again, let's get a recap. So inside of dynamic data masking, the data is stored in its raw clear text format. It's only tokenized or it's only masked if we have a policy set against it, right? And then we can set conditions on what we want to do with that. And again, just for me, when I'm all done, everything looks like it's good. Everything worked like we thought it should. Yay. I'm going to go back to my test area. I'm going to go ahead and just clean all this up before I forget. So I'm going to go ahead and do all this. And if you ever uh, create a, this is kind of a note here, if you ever try to, say, drop a masking policy before you do anything, it's going to say, uh-oh, you can't drop it because it's already applied. So you kind of have to do it in the, in the order, right? I'm going to have to, well, I'm going to drop my sequence first. But then I, I alter the table, and I'm going to unset that. So you can see the unset command. All right before, at the very top, uh, I did the alter table and I set it. I'm going to go ahead and unset it here. This will turn it back off again. Now I should be able to drop that policy, which I can. I'm going to go ahead and clean up all my stuff. So I'm going to clean up my table, get rid of my functions, and I'll get rid of all these roles I created. All right, now my development system is right back where it should be, right back where I started. And I can put this code back into a Git repo and people can you know, take this out. They can try it. Maybe I'll, we can doctor it up or they can change it to use their own roles that they want to use. But regardless, we are in business. So let's jump back. And the use case is complete. Yay. Let's do a little recap. So we found out today that Snowflake has two different types of uh, data masking, right? Or data tokenization. Number one is the dynamic data masking, which is what we went over. And they also have external. And we went over the who, what, when, where, how, and why of all the different aspects of dynamic data masking. And then we traversed a use case, right? A kind of a real life use case of what something might happen inside of a company that maybe deals with PII involving uh, SSNs. Well, that's it for today, guys. I hope I was able to unmask some of the info regarding Snowflake's column security features. Thanks for watching and please subscribe for more HashMap content. HashMap Megabytes.